Yeah. You can hear me, right? Yeah. Oh, there's a oh. lot of disturbance. Lot of uh, echoes. Maybe you can actually mute on this. Okay. Yeah, is everything okay? All right. Because um, uh, I, I, you probably mute on your side. You, I, I can't hear you. Uh, but okay, I hope you can hear me now. Um, um, really, uh, it take take some time. But okay, um, uh, it's really uh, thank Karen for the uh, kind invitation and uh, Nitish for organizing everything. Um, it's really my, my great pleasure to give my, uh, this presentation uh, on Zoom. Uh, it's also the, really the first time for me to connect to, uh, across the ocean uh, to Europe. Um, okay, um, I, 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 uh, in this presentation, I would like to talk about some of the, my work actually starting uh, almost 10 years ago when I was a postdoc uh, with Michiel Sprig at Cambridge. And then I carry on the research actually uh, in Aberdeen and uh, uh, now in, in Xiamen. Um, uh, it's more of a developing an initial method for modeling electrochemical interfaces. And um, um, most of my uh, presentation will focus on this bit, but really uh, speaking, uh, uh, giving a, a, a seminar in the world leading Catalysis, a, a theoretical catalysis center. Uh, I would also like to spend five or ten minutes on really the uh, uh, catalysis because um, I, uh, I really also have a background in uh, uh, in surface cat catalysis when I did my PhD. So that's uh, more of a, a recent work uh, in the in the in the group. Okay, so the uh, the background of my research is on the uh, uh, all the important energy problems. Uh, the world is using too much carbon-based fuels. So we have to, uh, the CO2 emission problem, then people want to move to the uh, renewable energy, for example, the solar energy, of course, then we have the uh, energy storage uh, uh, problem. So um, the three uh, things relate to the energy research. That's also this really the main uh, research themes in the, uh, we call the ICANN Center uh, in, in Xiamen. Um, so uh, the first is optimization of energy efficiency of carbon-based fuel and also solar energy utilization, energy storage and conversion. So for chemists, for those three uh, research areas, uh, what really related is catalysis and electrochemistry and the key uh, the key subject of these two uh, sub branch in chemistry is really the surface and the interface um, of uh, certain materials, for example, catalyst or the ele electro materials. Okay, so that, those are electrochemical cells uh, we can find in, uh, um, in energy applications, the fuel cells, battery, super capacitors, and solar cells. Um, so, uh, for, for a computational chemist, if we look at this, um, uh, this uh, complicated energy devices, what really is the key of those devices is the uh, uh, electrochemical interface. So, that's a, a more of a simplified version of what we, uh, we can find in, uh, in textbook. So, what's really going on at this electrochemical interface? Where that's, uh, is really a, a place um, uh, joined between electronic conductor, which is our electromaterials, and ionic conductors that normally the electrolyte solutions. So the current need to flow through. There must be a electrochemical reaction going on so that the uh, there's an electron transfer across the interface to simulate this this process at the interface. Really, one of the grand challenges in computational chemistry. Just. Um, uh, step back, just look at the, uh, uh, for example, using this photo electrochemical cell example to understand 
how the carbon flows through the electrochemical cell. Very often, we can draw this type of energy diagram. And that's, of course, for a semiconductor electrode, we have uh, the band positions. And also, what we want to reduce or ox oxide in the solution. So we, we need to achieve certain level alignment so that we can have the, uh, um, the um, electron transfer across the interface. That's really determine the thermodynamics of the electron uh, uh, transfer across the, um, the interface, uh, across the electrochemical cells. Um, what's really important in this electrochemical interface is that when we apply a bias, the, surface, the interface will build up a certain uh, uh, um, electric double layers. Within this electric double layer, there's a very strong electric field that can break chemical bond, can force, force electron transfer across. So we have those models. And um, think uh, there's also um, what people control is the electrical potential. And there's a certain um, uh, special uh, uh, condition, so-called the potential of zero charge, that's where the electronic charge on the, uh, there's no net electronic charge on metal surface. And the electric double layers will be formed when the applied voltage devi uh, deviating from the potential of zero charge. So that's, uh, um, we, we really spend a long time trying to understand what's go, uh, what the structure of the electric double layer and what's really going on there. Um, the, the problem, of course, for um, computational chemistry, the first thing we want to uh, define or to calculate is the electrical potential itself. In electrochemistry, uh, electrochemical ex experiment is so common that every people know how to control the potential so that you can uh, po have this uh, polarization curve. But for ab initial calculation, we, in order to determine the electrical potential in our simulation model, we have to really understand what is the electrical potential. And this theory uh, behind the electrical potential actually was uh, solved a long time ago in, uh, 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 in electrochemistry, for example, by people like uh, Trasati. Um, actually, to determine the so-called absolute electrical potential, I only here give this complex equation. I will not explain that. But just to point out that um, to determine the electrical potential, we, we need to select a reference, OK? Um, actually, in electrochemistry, very often, we have three types of references. We have so-called uh, po uh, reference potential at infinity, and also the uh, potential electrostatic potential in the vacuum just outside the metal surface, and also the, um, the electrostatic potential in the vacuum just outside the electrolyte solution. So there are actually three types of potentials, uh, uh, we, um, uh, uh, potential references. But in electrochemistry, Trasati explained very clearly in this paper that electrochemists choose the potential just, uh, just outside the electrolyte solution as the reference, okay, for very good reason. So um, in order to determine the electrical potential, we need to have a consistent potential reference, okay? And also when we want to compare two electrical potentials, we also have, need to have a consistent potentials, uh, potential references. Another, um, uh, to me, also a confusion for, for a while is the definition of electrochemical potential. Of course, it's, uh, um, uh, it's rather straightforward. Actually, in electrochemistry, people write the electrochemical potential. Here, you have a, a small hat here uh, to indicate that electrochemical potential that I uh, partition into two terms, a chemical term and also a so-called electrostatic term. And these five people call it so-called inner potential or uh, uh, Gavani potential. And, so, and here, that's a charge of the, uh, of, of, of the species I. For a neutral species, we have no problem of, because uh, that term is gone, so the chemical potential is essentially the same of electrochemical potential. But if uh, for a charge, charge the ions, then we, we really have this, uh, this, this electrostatic pot potential term. But the complication, I guess, is uh, when we do any quantum chemical ch chemistry calculation like using DFT, 
very often the energy, so we know is a functional of the electron density. Um, so in then, uh, DFT, we, we, uh, we separate this in these four terms. If we look closely, these two, that's an uh, electron and a nuclei interaction, uh, uh, actually attraction energy. So that's a classical electro, uh, electrostatic ter um, uh, term. That's the um, um, co columbic energy. That's the electron-electron repulsion energy. We can also consider that a as a classical uh, electrostatic energy. But here we also have kinetic energy and the exchange correlation energy. So in quantum chemistry, we really uh, optim optimize the, uh, uh, the, the electron density in order to minimize the total energy. So in real world, we never just optimize the electrostatic energy, but uh, actually both, uh, we optimize both together. So that comes to this, uh, um, um, the com I, I found also uh, lots of confusion in literature what's the electrostatic potential and the, the electrostatic potential calculated from uh, any quantum chemistry calculation and also the uh, uh, what's the relation between the electrostatic potential with this Gavani or inner potential uh, defined in electrochemistry. Um, here that's actually so by this so-called Gibbs uh, Guggenheim principle uh, it states that the electro, uh, electrical, uh, electrical potential difference between two regions of different chemical composition cannot be measured, okay? So although in electrochemistry, we separate these two terms for better understanding, but um, in, in reality, it's actually difficult or if not impossible to separate these two terms, at least what experimentally uh, measure uh, that's the electrostatic potential. Uh, you can only measure them actually uh, uh, for if the two regions have the same chemical composition, but if they have different chemical composition, we can't really measure the elect electrical potential differences. Just look at the, what we normally calculate in a, uh, uh, that's an interface setup, uh, calculated in DFT uh, for, the, for the electrode, you see many spikes, spikes mm -hmm. that's cor um, cor corresponding the, uh, the position of the nuclei because it's a very positive charge, right? So you have a very negative potential here. Uh, so that really has no correspondence. Uh, if you look at this difference, uh, has no correspondence between the so-called inner potential difference between these two, two, two phases. Just look at the number, it's very often on the order of 10 volt. So that's, uh, that's actually clearly not what uh, uh, electrochemistry uh, refer to uh, as a, um, inner potential and also if we think of liquid water and a vape and a vacuum you calculate the uh, the electrostatic potential difference from any dft uh, simulation you actually have a number uh, very large on the order of 3.5 ev so that's uh, again cannot be the surface potential of water uh, very often uh, uh, mentioned in electrochemistry um, people think that's only around 200 milli EV, so that's a huge difference. Um, but the, uh, the solution to this is actually already pointed out by Gibbs uh, uh, quite a while ago, really. The difference of potential in pieces of metal of the same kind attire, attached to the electrodes is exactly one of the things that we can and do measure. So uh, in electrochemistry, we can measure the a potential difference between two ends of a co copper wire, for example, uh, but we, we can't really measure the, uh, the potential difference between, for example, a metal, uh, a metal copper and, for example, platinum. So that actually cannot be measured. So in, compute, in calculation, then what we can calculate is actually, for example, for an interface, uh, we can first calculate the potential difference between the two, uh, two uh, between the interface. Uh, for this case, for a neutral surface, then we have a charged uh, interface. We calculate two potential difference. Then this, the difference in the difference actually make, uh, uh, refer to the change in the interface potential, okay? Uh, in this case, since we are actually only comparing the potential, uh, the electrostatic potential 
uh, in the same phase, okay, so, uh, so that they have the same chemical composition. For that reason, we, we, uh, that potential difference is meaningful and it can be compared to the uh, to, uh, experiment. Okay, um, just a bit, uh, um, really background. So what, um, what the difficulty in really uh, defining the electron potential and the theory behind it. So the methodology we use is to calculate the, uh, to model the uh, interfa interfacial electrochemistry is really, uh, we, we choose the initial molecular dynamics because it is first taking into account the electronic structure of the electrode if we are, want to understand for example, electrocatalysis, those are the chemical option certainly is the electronic structure effect. So we better have the electronic structure uh, uh, taking into account. Also, we, we want to apply a bias and we want to simulate that electron transfer reactions. We, we really have to uh, uh, include in the electronic structure in our uh, model method. And on, on the other hand, so in the liquid electrolyte, um, if we want to look at, uh, for example, modeling the, um, um, the dielectric uh, screening if we uh, apply a bias, so those are all dynamic effects of the uh, salt, uh, electrolyte solution. So then the molecular dynamics will be important to also account for the, uh, those, those, those dynamic effects. So uh, for that reason, I, um, we think uh, uh, our initial molecular dynamics is good too for atomistic modeling of interfacial electrochemistry. Uh, of course, the downside is also obvious because it's, uh, uh, it's too very, very expensive. Okay, just back to the, um, the, the first thing we want to uh, really um, to calculate is the electro potential, um, uh, giving a, a certain interface model. Of course, as a, uh, in the field, there's a um, uh, other method we, uh, we know uh, is actually well known based on the um, um, already in, in, um, so, uh, in for surface so-called the work function method. So we can reference all the Fermi energy to the to the vacuum. Uh, in the model, you have to explicit also include a metal phase, water phase, and also a a vacuum phase. All the work fun, uh, the Fermi level reference. Uh, to the to the to the vacuum, just to point out that's the vacuum just outside the electro electro uh, 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 electrolyte solution. So that's is indeed the reference taken in uh, by uh, 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 electrochemists. Okay, but the thing is that what we calculate, we will obtain so-called absolute potential. Okay, absolute electro potential, but to uh, convert to a uh, so a standard hydrogen electrode uh, uh, reference scale, we have to also subtract the absolute potential of the standard hydrogen electrode, which is on the uh, uh, the the number varies a bit, normally around 4.44, but there also can be a half EV uncertainty. Um, um, but just to point out that. There's also a, a difficulty in using this method is uh, in, in, this, in, in this setup, we have to explicitly include the water vapor interface. But just to point out that yet another interface is, is actually a non-trivial thing, okay, to simulate that just to, uh, to uh, get, uh, for example, sufficient statistic to averaging all the interface structure uh, uh, is already um, not straightforward. Um, Okay, um, the, the methodology we use really, we, we directly come uh, reference to our um, re uh, electro potential to the standard hydrogen electro. Uh, um, in electrochemistry, right, re people uh, don't really measure the absolute potential because we never really uh, take the electron to the vacuum. So what, we, what people normally uh, actually all uh, measure all the time is the uh, is a relative relative potential that's a potential difference relative uh, to a reference electrode uh, in this case we can use in a standard hydrogen electrode and there are many other uh, reference electrode for example silver silver chloride uh, uh, columnar um, reference electrode and so on 
But just look at this, uh, the re standard hydrogen reactor is just a half reaction, um, re um, basically reducing a aqueous proton into a gas phase dihydrogen. Okay, that can um, separate into two steps. First is a solvation or desolvation process okay, of a proton. So that's related to the solvation free energy of proton. And then in the gas phase, the gas phase proton get reduced to form uh, uh, dihydrogen. So that's uh, very simple to calculate. But uh, what we do actually, we explicitly calculate the solvation free energy. Then we reference all the, for example, the Fermi energy or uh, uh, um, uh, redox potential, electro potential, with respect to this solvation free energy proton. Then we can directly convert this number to the uh, to the standard hydrogen electro scale. That's what we normally do. For example, we calculate this uh, 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 energy inserting electron to the, for example, to the whole uh, to. To, to, to the Fermi energy of the electrode. And at the same time, we insert a proton in the uh, bulk solution. So that's a solvation process. We calculate the solvation energy and also calculate the uh, electron insertion energy. Then, uh, we, uh, we, then we can reference to this energy uh, with respect to the uh, this solvation free energy of proton. Then we get the potential with respect to standard hydrogen electrode. So, uh, the problem, of course, in here, uh, we, we have explicit solvent. We then, in order to calculate solvation and energy proton, we have to take a, a full free energy calculation method. So that uh, comes to the uh, free energy perturbation theory. We, uh, we basically construct a mapping potential, which is a linear mixing of the uh, reactant and the product state. We're using uh, ab initial molecular dynamics uh, simulation to sample this mapping potential. Okay, uh, here we have a coupling parameter eta can change from zero to one. Uh, when uh, when eta equal to zero, that we correspond to so-called reactant state. Could be a, for example, a, uh, re, a reduced state. And then uh, when eta equal to one, then the mapping potential corresponds to the product state for oxidation reaction. That will uh, correspond to an oxidized state. And if we think of a proton transfer, then we can, that could be a protonation state or that's a deprotonation state. Okay, we, we, we need to construct this, uh, 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 it's like a path connecting uh, uh, the Hamiltonian from the reactant to the product state. Then using some dynamic integration, we can really uh, uh, obtain that just to calculate the so-called vertical energy difference between the reactant and the product state. And that, non, that uh, vertical energy need to uh, actually um, uh, is an ensemble average corresponding to a certain mapping potential uh, uh, eta. Okay, so uh, in our calculation, we really have this, uh, uh, we need to calculate a series of, of um, uh, coupling parameters uh, from zero to one, and for each point, we do a ab initial molecular dynamic simulation. Then we have a, a trajectory, and along this trajectory, we need to average so the vertical energy gap, okay, between the reactant and the product state, and uh, depends on uh, whether this function is smooth or not. Uh, we, we 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 decide how many points we need to sample then we do a numerical integration along this curve so that we can get a free energy of this, uh, uh, this, this, this transformation. So in our case, I mean, for transferring or re inserting or removing an electron or a proton, okay, that will correspond to a redox process and also a deprotonation or protonation process. So just uh, some example, uh, we calculate in aqueous solution, uh, calculate redox potential for, uh, for, for, uh, for those um, redox, uh, so that's a PKA, sorry. That's a PKA, so I will not uh, go through the detail, just to point out that um, uh, the, uh, our calculation for PKA is actually quite accurate, um, even at the GGA level. So if you use a hybrid functional, uh, you get similar accuracy. But for redox potential, we can clearly see there's a large error on the order of half EV. Okay, that's very large. That's an average 
um, um, error. But for case uh, difficult case like chlorine, the error can un, can be on the order of 0.9 mV. That's really too 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 large. And if we go uh, so move to the hybrid functional, we can clearly see the uh, the the error is halved. So the functional it really matters, uh, uh, particularly for calculating uh, redox potentials. The reason for that we we spend quite a while to understand that that's uh, somehow related to the uh, a so-called delocalization error in the density functional approximation. So that um, that's really because of this error, the functional uh, give a too small band gap. Uh, in this case, for water, water is just a one band gap oxide, right? And the error in the band gap is on the order of 3.5 eV. It's really large. And the majority of this error come from the valence band of the water, way too high. Okay, uh, so that's the experiment value. That's what we calculate at GGA level. The problem is once we have a solid, so um, so it's it really acts as a defect or impurity in a in a uh, oxide a host materials like in here water. Um, so that's a um, in that's a sort of Anderson impurity model um, where people can. Uh, we can use to predict that once the solid, a localized solid level can mix or hybridize with the band structure of the host materials, you, that will uh, produce a resonance level, normally just above the, the for example, in this case, valence band uh, 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 maximum. So in, uh, for that reason, you can see that B-leap normally uh, um, uh, really predict this valence band of water too high, then all the level associated with, in this case, OH, in the solid level, all too high. That will shift up all the levels uh, we predict. That's the, uh, the, what, the reason we put uh, the, um, the uh, redox potential wrong. Actually, it's always too high. And if we use a hybrid functional, we can pre push down the, uh, the, the valence band and also all the level also push down so that we can uh, alleviate the, this error, but not completely fix. Then we can go on to think of maybe we can use a higher level of uh, electronic structure theory like RPA or double hybrid functional. We can clearly see the, the, the error is um, actually uh, get improved. So uh, we just need to uh, more accurate electronic structure theory. Okay, uh, just uh, some preparation really what, what the methodology we develop and apply the aqua solution so then move on to the uh, what we want to simulate the real uh, metal uh, water interface that's the model we normally use uh, to simulate a, a, a metal uh, electrochemical interface in this case we we we, uh, we that's corresponding to the potential zero charge condition you don't see any ions there's no charge on the surface so the first thing we want to really calculate the electrical potential at that condition, that will be, uh, uh, be the uh, potential of zero charge. So the model we can afford right now is on, uh, it's a few, hun a few hundred atoms. So the, uh, and also the time scale is normally around 20 big second. Uh, so uh, it's, it's just enough, I would say. Uh, it's still very expensive. Um, to calculate the uh, electrical potential or the potential zero charge for a uh, met metal interface, uh, we can simply use in the computational standard high electrical potential I just mentioned. But the problem, as I say, is very expensive to do the uh, calculation to model, uh, uh, to uh, sampling the structure for the uh, interface. And also to calculate solvation free energy of a proton because that is our reference, right? That's uh, require a full free energy calculation. It's way too expensive. Uh, uh, then um, we, we, we really um, extend our method. Um, in, in, in this modified, so-called modified computational standard hydrogen electrode, uh, we don't explicitly calculate solvation energy of proton in this interface model. We actually using this integral, we calculate in a, uh, say 32 water box, that's much cheaper. But we have a, uh, a second step of align, uh, align, uh, aligning the electrostatic potential of the bulk water in the interface model. 
and also the uh, electrostatic potential uh, in a pure water box that is zero. Um, in, um, really, um, um, that is um, uh, the reference for the uh, for the, uh, choosing in the um, ever sum. So that is by that by constructing is already zero. So all we need to cal to calculate is the electrostatic potential average in the bulk water and the reference all the, uh, for example, the Fermi energy we calculate of the metal to that and also the, uh, uh, the salvation free energy of our salvation integral proton calculated in the, in the pure water box. So that's save a lot of time. Then we can uh, basically get the, uh, the electro potential just within a five to 10 peak second uh, AMD trajectory of the interface model. Okay, just to show some number, um, uh, we calculate, uh, uh, for example, uh, four metals. So we check the functional doesn't really change much, um, and we want to compare. So that's the number in the bracket are the uh, are the uh, uh, experimental value actually quite close. For that's the work function of the metals uh, calculated and the experimental value. So there's no water on top. So there's a small, there's a large error for platinum, uh, palladium. Uh, we, we, we think that is uh, uh, the error of the function. But anyway, what we really want to, um, to look at is this so-called uh, water potential difference. So that's basically the difference between the potential of zero charge and the work function. So because they are different, uh, at a different uh, using different reference, we have to convert that by also using this uh, absolute potential for the standard hydrogen electron. So this number really refers to the uh, interface potential between a metal uh, in vacuum and a metal in water. Okay, there's no charge on the surface uh, whatsoever. So that's only in the pure effect of the water. You can see the uh, gold and silver uh, normally have a smaller number, but for platinum or palladium, uh, pla uh, platinum and palladium, the number is much larger, okay, it's on the order, uh, it's more than one volt difference. Okay, so in electrochemistry, there are people, um, and people very often think that's because the water may take a certain orientation near the surface, so then the water take, have, uh, the interface of water have dipole that will contribute to that, uh, uh, that uh, so-called water potential difference. Since we have, we do initial molecular dynamics, we have all the water structure, we actually um, uh, calculate the orientational type of the water near the interface. So um, we, we, then we integrate over, okay, um, along the, uh, the surface normal. We actually found the, the water dipole orientation contribute very little to the interface potential. So it's, uh, it's almost zero for all four metals, okay? Then we actually can separate that. Uh, there's another contribution uh, we call that's because of water interact more electron electronically um, uh, with the metal. So they will induce certain charge rate distribution that you can see contribute much larger than the orientation, water orientation, okay? So, um, that, that's, that's really an electronic structure, in fact. Just to look at this potential so-called, uh, we do this uh, potential electro density difference profile. You can see there's a clearly for pla palladium, uh, platinum and palladium, there's a uh, charge transfer from uh, the water side to the, to, the, to the metal surface. Okay, you can see there's a uh, large difference in here, but for gold and silver, such uh, inner metals, you, don't, you see very little. And also, just look at the uh, project density uh, of state for the water chemical over on the surface. You can clearly see that there's a, uh, for example, there's normally the occupied state, the valence band of water, but you can see that there are certain density of state really penetrate above the Fermi level. So those are become unoccupied. So that's corresponding to the electron transfer to the metal. So that's clearly an um, electron effect due to the chemisorption of, the, of some surface waters. That can uh, also have some features uh, in the OH stretching mode, because uh, for platinum, 
you, you can see the water cancel of that weakening the OH bond, you will have a, a red shift compared to the to the uh, to the other waters. Okay, but you 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 see you hardly see anything from on the on the gold. Um, um, that was um, the uh, for the potential zero charge condition. So we, we really want to also look at the uh, what the electronic stru uh, the, the structure of the electric double layer. The the, um, the model we use is actually rather simple. A uh, similar uh, method also have been used uh, uh, in um, Professor Noskov and uh, Ross Meisel's group. Uh, we simply um, build up an interface by just inserting cation, okay, near the interface. For in this case, sodium cation, okay. If you do electronic structure calculation, the electron will automatically go to the surface because that will be corresponding to the ground state, right? So then uh, you will have a charge separation. Naturally, you will get the uh, uh, negative charge uh, surface and uh, a positive, that's cation. Uh, we call the compact double layer, okay? Because the, the sodium we normally just put very. Hello? Hello? We, we can hear. Okay, because uh, that's good, because I, I suddenly can't hear myself. I saw there was uh, some connection issue. Uh, anyway, so then um, uh, we, we put the sodium cutter near the surface. And uh, during our, say, 10 or 20 pick, pick, pick second MD simulation, the ions really don't have the time scale to move away. So then we, we claim that will be a double layer, more like a compact double layer uh, or compact home host layer. That since there's no fluctuation, okay, don't have much of fluctuation of the position of the sodium, so that there's essentially no uh, cation diffuse away then we think this model can, say, correspond to a high concentration limit where there's no diffuse layer. So um, at least in, uh, that's, um, okay, in our uh, very uh, simple model, a uh, very small model, and also in such a short time scale. Um, what we can do is um, uh, we don't do really uh, things complicated. We, we, uh, we, our models are all fixed number of particles. We can, we do several models. Uh, each model, we include different numbers of sodium ions and also electrons. Uh, overall, all of those models are neutral, right? So then uh, we, we basically, by changing the uh, number of ions, then we change the surface charge density, okay? So we increase the charge density by increasing the number of ions. Uh, since we have a method of calculating the electrical potential, uh, I showed you for the potential zero charge condition, we can also apply similar method to calculate the electrical potential for all those models. Then we, we basically uh, first determine the charge density. That's our con controlling parameter. Then we calculate the electrical potential. Okay, uh, that's really the, another way around. Um, um, compare uh, what it, uh, electrochemistry chemi experiment, uh, right? Uh, uh, normally, we, in experiment, we control the potential, then the surface charge is induced by the potential, but we really, in our uh, case, we, we, we change the charge density by almost by hand, right? Then we, we measure, we measure the electrical potential. Uh, and here, of course, we calculate. Um, then for the uh, gold electrolyte interface, um, we actually collaborate with uh, 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 the Professor Jian Fengli and uh, Zhong Qunting uh, in Xiamen. They develop very special technical so-called shiners. That is a surface enhanced romance uh, spectroscopy technique. Uh, so uh, they put these so-called shines as a gold nanoparticles, which can really enhance the signals at, uh, for the water at near the interface, okay? Uh, normally you can't really, uh, if you just do a measurement, you can't get any signal, but due to this enhancement, they uh, normally uh, um, on the factor, uh, 
uh, the enhancement factor is on the order of a million or even more, so that you can really see uh, uh, it drives a signal for the interface of water. Um, anyway, they can measure those, uh, um, um, for in this case, the OH stretch, oh, so, sorry, here, they, 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 their measurement, and they, of course, measure at a different potential, in this case, case at the negative bios. Um, what we do, since we can, we build up the model, we, 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 we know the surface charge density and we calculate the potential, then we actually know the, this model corresponding to what potential condition, okay? Then, uh, of course, we can do simple VDOS calculation. We can uh, also calculate the OH stretching. Uh, we, in, in this case, we, we don't have the, uh, the intensity, but we, we do see the, uh, the, uh, the, the OH stretching peak. And it's also shifting uh, with the potential, okay? And uh, compared to the experiment, that experiment, we don't have that, uh, that many data points, but we, uh, and also the number doesn't quite on top of each other, but that's uh, OH stretching so to get this correct is um, it's also very difficult considering the, uh, for example, this is said and many other things can, can uh, affect in the, the uh, frequency calculation. But the, well, the point is we can really see there are two transitions at a certain potential. Um, so this, this start shift, the slope change, so like two transition um, uh, in, in, in this, uh, in this uh, uh, frequency, uh, um, OH uh, frequency. Anyway, but the, uh, what we can check is actually from our um, molecular dynamics uh, simulation so that we can uh, look at what the structure corresponding to that, the, uh, that potential. But uh, what we really find is that, uh, I will not go to those details, but just to point out that, so uh, at around potential zero charge, water more or less flat, lying flat on the, uh, on the surface so that you don't have really a uh, net orientation and so on. But when we uh, shift the potential to negative, the water starting to turn around. So with a proton pointing to the surface, because that's a positive proton, um, uh, you have negative surface, okay. And when you in, uh, uh, have more negative potential, you have more and more interface of water uh, with one proton pointing to the surface. But at a certain point, somewhere here, that's corresponding to the first transition uh, in the OH uh, um, uh, uh, stretching frequency, um, that, that where all the interface of water with one hydrogen pointing to the surface. And at this point, it's like saturate every water point, one hydrogen down, okay? Then we get the, say, shift the potential more negative, we don't see, we see a very sharp change in here. The slope gets steep. And there's another transition point in here. That's where we start to see the, the water turning around again with two hydrogen points down. That's where the dipole of the water uh, perpendicular to the surface. Okay. Um, okay, that's corresponding to the second transition. So uh, this collaboration between experiment, I think, uh, is also a, uh, um, is a, say, a, um, a nice um, a showcase that the initial molecular dynamics can provide molecular detail of the interface of water under the uh, electrochemical conditions. But it's important to compare to experiment so that to, to make sure that our model uh, uh, is actually makes sense. But what we also, um, theoretically, we're very much interested in the double layer capacitance. So uh, since we can calc we, we, we change the surface charge density, we can calculate the potential, we can directly also calculate the capacitance. For gold, we get the value, say, uh, around 30. Um, that's also uh, close, what people normally expect for, for, for metal interface, so also close. Um, 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 what is more 
perhaps more relevant uh, for, for, um, for example, electric catalysis, of course, for um, um, metal like platinum. We also do similar calculations, it's a methodology method or the same. Um, just to show here, um, at the very negative potential, okay, uh, we, we can see that the water all point down, okay, with one hydrogen point down. Remember, for platinum at the potential zero charge condition, we have some surface water can be on the surface, right? When we get very positive on the positive side, you have actually many, much, many water uh, become chemisorbed. More, more, more water compare uh, the uh, chemisorbed water at the potential zero charge condition, okay? Uh, simply because uh, you have negative oxygen. So that the uh, that will uh, become favor if the water become chemical uh, at a positive bias. If you look at the structure, you can also see that the water, the uh, density uh, profile perpendicular to the surface, uh, you can clearly see that at the positive potential, okay, that positive charge density, you can certainly have more uh, surface water chemical, okay, and when you decrease. At some point, uh, the, the, this very negative potential you, you don't see. And also, uh, this is blue line here. Um, the first peak actually disappear. So in this case, uh, we can have, that's the charge density, that's our potential. And we can also set, see a change uh, of the coverage of the surface water, just chemical of the water. Okay, uh, from roughly at the very negative potential, there's none, there's no chemical of the water. At the positive potential, it was saturated around half uh, mononair. Okay, um, just to say, just to, based on what we just see from the structure, just think of the dielectric response of the water, uh, um, say, in the top layer. Um, so normally we think there's a water at potential zero charge, so that's normal dielectric response region. When your surface gets negative, the potential shift down in the electro, uh, uh, for the electro potential. If you have positive charge, of course that will go up, right? Uh, that will become positive. Um, but there's another contribution, just I just said for the water, chemicals of the water. The, that contribution is already quite, is uh, at the potential of zero charge. I, I, I mentioned at the beginning that is on the order of 1.2 volt because the charge redistribution uh, from the, there's a charge transfer from water to metal surface. That will uh, corresponding to, uh, will contribute to a interface potential shift of 1.2 volt, okay? At a very negative potential, the, all the water dissolves then you don't have this contribution due to this electronic structure effect. Uh, but if your potential increase, okay, become positive, you have more water can absorb, okay? Then you will expect to see uh, a widening of this, uh, that's a more contribution uh, from this charge transfer effect. Uh, but it was saturated at some point. But just to point out that the direction, check the direction, when we, increase the potential from left to right, actually look at the electric potential, it actually goes negative, goes down. That's actually indicating a negative capacitive response because of this uh, chemical option or desorption of the surface water. Um, since we have this profile, so we, what do we, we, in this case, we have more points, uh, uh, although we can't afford more, um, we, we can really, um, to, uh, just take the derivative, right? We get the differential capacitance of this uh, interface water as a function of the uh, potential. So that, that, that is uh, actually, uh, you can see a great peak, okay? Near the potential zero charge. Actually, the, the capacitance is not small on the order of 100, okay? And that, if we check to the experiment, just some indication that that's already the home host capacitance where you have to remove the pseudo capacitance due to the uh, formation of OH or hydrogen uh, on the surface and so on. Anyway, but you, af af after you're taking that, uh, taking out those uh, contributions, you can still get a 
uh, home host capacitance having this shape, you can see a maximum around 100 and the slight, the peak position slightly more positive than, than the potential of zero charge. Okay, uh, that's more or less the shape we have in here. So um, then we, we go and just build up, uh, because we have surface desert water chemis over and dissolve uh, process, we using the uh, franking absorption isotherm because the water we are, uh, chemicals of water will induce cycles, so they will have a lateral interaction. Then we can, uh, we did some derivation. We actually can separate this compass, uh, uh, the um, home host capacitance uh, into two contributions. So the first one, the normal solvent di uh, response, uh, we, we would expect. But there's another component due to the absorption and desorption of the surface water. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned that actually in the last slide, that contribution is a negative value. Okay, so that is a negative. Then those two capacitors in series, okay, you actually can have a peak for the combined capacitors actually even actually increase compared to, to any of these two. Um, so that's really, uh, I want to say that that's an electronic structure effect of the surface water, chemicals of the water, that can uh, induce a negative compa uh, component in the, uh, in the home uh, host capacitance. Okay, um, I, I don't know how much time I left. If I may, I can spend five or 10 min min uh, minutes just to uh, quickly uh, really describe what one thing we just uh, uh, found that I, I, I very much like. Um, do, do I have five or ten minutes? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. So, um, as I mentioned that, uh, I, I really like to speak some catalysis, okay, in this world leading uh, catalysis uh, theory uh, center. Um, since I, I really have the background in surface catalysis, when I did my PhD uh, at Belfast with uh, Professor Pei Jun Hu, uh, uh, that was the time that everybody are doing volcano clothes. Really, uh, people can claim they are doing theoretical catalysis without even making uh, one or two volcano clothes. So that was my uh, time also doing this. Um, um, that's basically in this, uh, my, my thing, my PhD thesis was on uh, studying fissure top synthesis. So we, uh, we studied the CO hydrogenation to form methane and water. So in, uh, in, this, uh, in these reactions, we can do volcano plot based on absorption energy of carbon and oxygen. So then we, we, uh, we can make a three dimen dimensional volcano plot. But the, in, in, uh, at that time, we, uh, I, uh, we realized that if we only have a single phase, the absorption energy of carbon and oxygen, oxygen are actually not unrelated. They actually are connected. So at that time, we call it the cons uh, some of the dynamic constraints. And then um, uh, people, many people in the field now people try to work out, for example, biphase model or two sides. Uh, absorption side try to break in so-called scale, uh, scaling relation. And um, that paper was also uh, actually, I'm, I was very glad that Professor Jens Noskov wrote, uh, wrote a, a small light a commentary uh, for our paper. That uh, was a, a quite an excitement at that point. Yeah, but um, as we know that the catalyst is really not like in our simulation of a very static surface, the colors move all the time, okay? They change the shape. Uh, you, people can even now experimentally, you can uh, uh, really uh, um, see that like moving uh, using the uh, ambient pressure of TEM, for example, you can really see the nanoparticle changing shape. Sh uh, sh shape. And also at initial molecular simulations, people can also See, for example, the gold cluster. Uh, if you have CO absorbed on top, they really change to very de uh, deform quite a bit, even uh, uh, gold atom migration along the surface, along the oxide support. But just to point out that that's actually corresponding to 
two very different time scales. For a experiment, a TEM experiment, normally, uh, probably one of the farthest camera in the world, you can take, uh, say, a thousand or more, uh, slight, slightly more um, photos we, uh, in one second. So the time scale in here is really on the order of millisecond. But for all the molecular dynamics simulation, we normally do say on the order of 10 pick second. So there's a huge gap, time gap between these two pictures. Just think of the, um, uh, in heterogeneous catalysis, people know the catalyst really uh, have its own life. They will have also the life cycle spend, uh, depend on what process we are looking at for elementary step, uh, uh, reactions on the sec, peak second or nanosecond time scale. But of course, catalysts can also uh, eventually deactivate, but that is on the microscopic time scales. But even for the uh, cluster change their shape, the time scale as we just seen uh, in the video, uh, uh, in the video in the last slide, the, the time scale is much long, longer than the elementary steps. So for a reaction point of view, uh, or say uh, at least for elementary reaction point of view, the cluster really uh, maintain rather static, if you like, because the reaction itself is so fast. Uh, at that time scale, we normally think this, uh, the catalyst doesn't really change much. Uh, for that reason, when we do calculation, we um, um, choose to do, uh, for example, uh, look at, check if you want to calculate the reaction, you calculate the absorption, uh, the reaction energy, or even the uh, reaction barrier by some static geometry optimization method. But the question, the fundamental question uh, we want to address is what if the time scale of the dynamic evolution of the Kali structures overlap with that of the chemical reactions? Okay, so um, because we're doing ab initial molecular dynamics, we actually uh, can calculate the reaction along certain, for example, reaction coordinate, calculate the free energy profile, and uh, uh, along the, for example, the uh, reaction coordinate for, in this case, uh, oxygen-oxygen dissociation, uh, uh, we allow the cluster, uh, the, uh, the gold cluster also change, so we don't really constrain. So they will um, uh, change in shape uh, along the reaction coordinate. So, um, uh, the method that we use is called so-called potential mean force. We uh, we cons using constraint uh, molecular dynamics. We uh, constrain the, for example, the uh, oxygen oxygen dis distance. Then we carry out the MD simulation. We calculate the force uh, along the uh, this uh, the, the, the along the oxygen oxygen distance. Okay, that's the force along this uh, reaction coordinate. But of course, we need to average over the um, the the, uh, the, the trajectory. Then we integrate the force along the reaction coordinate, we can obtain the free energy profile. Okay, that's, so that's uh, how we get this profile. Um, the, so we, we, in this free energy profile, I want to emphasize that we uh, take into account all the configurations, okay, or possible configurations of the, uh, uh, in this case, go, go to cluster. Um, because we don't constrain that, it's, uh, it's, it's just a thermal fluctuation, everything is there. So all the entropic contributions are actually all in there. Um, the next thing is uh, we, we want to quantify the, um, the, the reaction entropy. The way of do, uh, doing this really, that, that's a rigorous way of doing this, basically calculating the temperature dependence of, the free, of free energy. So we calculate these, uh, that's what I showed you in the last, sorry, can I go back? Okay, uh, this is free energy profile, but we do this calculation in different temperature, okay? Then we, we can calculate the free energy difference of the reaction or the free energy barrier of, the, uh, of this reaction uh, as a function of temperature. Then that's what we have in here, okay? We see actually there's a, a slow decrease for the free energy, okay? The, Free energy barrier is the same, but uh, the effect is magnified here. But uh, I will only focus on the reaction energy here, free energy. And at some point, it decreased a lot, and then was 
just now the, the, the slope also uh, become uh, smaller at high temperature. But compared to normal static calculation, then uh, we do some, uh, say, uh, correction for, for example, vibrational entropy and so on. You don't see much change in the free energy. But if you really do all the sampling, uh, all the different configurations, you get a different profile. Um, anyway, then we take the de derivative of the free energy with respect to the temperature. We can get the entropy profile as a function. Uh, just looking here at the temperature, there's a range uh, uh, around 300 and 400 K. You can see a reaction entropy on the order of nearly 2000. That's a joule per mole per Kelvin. That's a very, very large entropy change. Okay, that's really make us wonder. Um, and uh, it's, it's, um, that can only be a phase transition. Okay, then we, we carry on just to check that. Um, but uh, what do we, 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 we calculate? We calculate the canonical cal uh, calorie uh, curves, basically increase the temperature we get. Uh, we can calculate the total energy of, uh, uh, for example, for the reactant transition and product state. We can see there's a jump at some point that's corresponding uh, uh, a quasi first order solid to liquid phase transition. Um, but I, I want to emphasize here, since it's a finite system, uh, is a quasi first order, you don't see, uh, uh, it's a range, okay, it's, it's not, there's a temperature range, it's not a, a very steep, very, not a very steep uh, jump like what we normally expect from a uh, phase transition. But the point in here is that the, along the reaction coordinate, reactant transition state and product, they have different melting points. Okay, uh, in this case, I only take the reactant and pro, uh, product as an example. The product actually have a lower melting point than the reactant, okay? So uh, what that means is at a certain temperature range, okay, at the, for example, in here, the product already start to melt around uh, in this, uh, just around the three, four, 340K. Then you, you will have an increase in the reaction entropy because in this temperature, the reactant remains solid, okay? When you go on and increase the temperature, and of course, the reactant start to melt, then you will again have, then the entropy actually decrease at the high temperature. So they all become uh, liquid. Just to, so things, uh, to summarize this in this case, um, uh, in this uh, uh, figure, at a low temperature, when both reactant and the product are solid, then the reactant entropy is very small. At a high temperature, both states become liquid state, okay? And their difference, although their entropy compared to the uh, solid state all increase quite a lot, but their difference is small, okay? Then this entropy change, right? uh, the high temperature also small, but there's a transition area where the, the product melt before the reactant then in this case, you have a huge entropy increase. So that's basically summarizing here. Once they melt, why the other doesn't at this transition temperature range, then there's a anomalous increase in the reaction entropy. Okay, that will decrease your reaction free energy. So that will help uh, to, uh, to drive this chemical uh, reaction. In this case, just oxygen dissociation. Um, of course, that's a very small gold cluster. Then we carry on trying to make slightly more realistic. We put a, uh, that's actually a model system prepared by experiment. So that's a uh, gold eight cluster on mag magnesia. We do similar calculation. We also uh, see a similar solid to liquid phase transition or oxygen dissociation on this gold, uh, gold cluster just the effect slightly smaller compared to the gas phase cluster. So this phase transition, uh, this, uh, this entropy uh, uh, maximum is uh, smaller, so around 700 now. Um, and we also look at the water dissociation. Uh, we see similar on gold 13 cluster, 
uh, but again, the EE factor is also smaller uh, compared to the uh, oxygen dissociation. So um, that may uh, just indicate that the, that can also have some impact on the uh, selectivity. So that really depends on what reaction, uh, uh, you know, the nature of the chemical reaction. Okay, with this, I guess I will uh, finally come to the conclusion. So we have a, a method now, ab initio molecular dynamic method calculating the electro potential uh, by using uh, our computational reference electro. And the water chemical option really play a key role in determining the interface potential. So uh, already at yeah, the potential zero charge condition. Um, and also uh, using our initial molecular dynamics, now we, we can model the, uh, in our simplified uh, double layer model, uh, we can at least start to look at the, what the water structure at the home host, the compact double layer, and also the compactance. As I, uh, I try to show you that there's a, uh, uh, actually even a negative compactance component uh, for uh, on platinum due to the uh, water chemistry option. And also uh, in the last bit, we talk about the dynamic catalysis when we take all the uh, configuration, um, possible configuration into account, we can actually see in, uh, in certain reactions that the solid to liquid phase transition along the reaction coordinate that can help uh, uh, in, uh, for example, the uh, breaking chemical bond. Okay, uh, finally, just some uh, acknowledgement. Uh, so, so all this work actually done by brilliant students in my group. Um, so uh, I have a number of students work on the interface. Jia Bo Le is one of my first students now host in the group. You know, most of the work I just explained and also some students working on the uh, cluster catalysis. Uh, Zhuan Zhuan did the, uh, the work I just showed you. And, um, I benef ben uh, my research really benefited a lot um, 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 from collaborating with uh, um, uh, brilliant people all across the world uh, already uh, early on with Mihil Spree and uh, uh, lots of uh, technical support. The code we use from the Zurich group, uh, Professor Hooter and uh, 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 Marcella and also many other experimental group, um, also people in Xiamen and so on. Um, and also, um, also thank the, uh, the fund, funding agencies. Um, uh, let me, if I, um, just very quickly, I want to uh, say in our, uh, in Xiamen, we have this sticky lab of uh, uh, physical chemistry of solid surface. And also we have this ICAM center, we really gather a group of uh, very uh, talented people uh, having complementary uh, uh, research techniques. Uh, we have uh, uh, a very strong group on, on uh, the so uh, surface enhanced romance spectroscopy, and also people doing uh, EC condition, electrochemical liquid cell, uh, TEM. And uh, we have people also do uh, Hongliang do uh, post laser deposition to grow very nice oxide thin film and also the synchrotron based uh, electronic structure techniques and uh, also the uh, scanning probe microscope from Professor Bing Wei Mao and uh, Jia Wei Yan and also uh, for example Yang Ye uh, look at the charge dynamics particularly for uh, semiconductors using the uh, uh, transition uh, transit absorption spectroscopy. So I really benefit and uh, I'm very grateful uh, working with them. Um, so um, um, the simulation really uh, goes a much long way with uh, this careful experiment. Uh, finally, just uh, as, um, I, uh, if I'm allowed, just to um, uh, some of the advertisement. So there's a PhD and postdoc position available. Uh, if you're interested in uh, single electro uh, photo or electrochemistry, both theory and experiment, I think we now have competitive salary and benefits. So the university really uh, provide a very uh, high quality or common combination with very nice C view, okay? So that's the uh, a, a photo of the campus of uh, Xiamen University. So uh, we are actually, I'm right, right, right now sitting in the chemistry building here. I think some of the postdoc uh, accommodation somewhere here. 
so that they can really have a nice CV. Um, so that's another, uh, that's the same, uh, that's a campus, but from another side. So the, you can see the mountain where I take, take the picture I showed you just now. So if you're interested, please draw me uh, an email. Um, and also, finally, thanks all for your kind of attention. All right, great. Uh, thanks a lot, June, for the, for the great uh, talk and also very comprehensive, I think. Uh, so there's quite a few questions. Um, I'll try to ask them. Can, you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah, I can hear okay. you. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so let me see. The, the first question is, um, um, let's see. So Jiali Ma asks, uh, the electrode in the simulation was charged by adding sodium. I found that there was only sodium plus ions. Uh, have you tried also including, for instance, like chlorine? And do you get a different capacitance and a different ion distribution? Uh, chlorine, you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's actually a very good question. In this case, uh, indeed, we only look at the cation. Uh, uh, the, one of the reasons is uh, uh, experimentally, we can only get the spectrum at the negative bias. Okay, for positive bias, they can't see any signal. Um, but, okay, the... Um, if you think of co-ion effect, we tried to put some co-ion nearby, it's okay. Uh, they don't really change the capacitance and the structure much. Um, but if you think of, for example, a, say, positive charge surface, okay, where um, I think, I hope you can see my, my, uh, my slides, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Uh, let me see guys, if I can, uh, all right, get bigger, okay. So in this case, we certainly have, uh, have uh, uh, anion, so that we have positive charge surface, right? Uh, but we try to avoid chloride, because chloride can specifically absorb on the surface. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next question is by Katerina, uh, and she asks, uh, in the, in the example of dissociation of uh, the, the cluster, gold cluster, the cluster was not supported and the influence of entropy seems to be smaller than a supported gold cluster. Is this yeah. true in general? Uh, for, for, the, for the system, we look at, uh, yeah, the, the effect is smaller on support. Okay. Uh, but uh, I, I guess um, we, we haven't looked at much of the... Uh, depend on the nature of the support, I would say that, sorry, that can be different. Okay, next mm -hmm. question is by Sudarshan. And uh, so he, he's asking, there's no vacuum in the Avinisho MD simulations that you're doing. So it's, it's, it's different from the work function method, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, is there a different. reason that you prefer your method over, or, or why, do you do the, why do you do your method over the work function method? where you would have a vacuum. Yeah, one of the real, uh, let me see, I can find the slide I showed you. In here, uh, there are actually two reasons, I think. The, uh, first of all, uh, for, you, for the work function method to you work, you have to basically subtract this experimental value. Okay, that's not from calculation, that's from experiment. Depend on which number you like, uh, people really choose different numbers, okay? So that's an uncertainty in this experimental value. Uh, our calculation don't need this, this, this number, so we direct reference to the solvation free energy protein. Another thing is we try to avoid simulating a water vapor interface. Okay, in order to equilibrate this interface and get uh, uh, a sufficient sampling, that can be easily 100 picoseconds. Okay, because water, water surface have shape, they, they really, uh, yeah, change, right? Um, I think uh, I have a question here, which is that, uh, so in principle, when you convert back to the work function changes, you, you are still using the experimental 4.44. Uh, when, you, uh, when, you, when you try to do the decomposition, for instance, and look at change in work function, you have to convert your PZC back to the uh, absolute yeah. like potential the work function, right? Yeah. So. Uh, in principle, uh, you could compute the absolute SHE potential. Uh, yeah. 
have you ever tried doing that? Because I know that Pas Alfredo Pascarello, for instance, has done that for in quite a few of the papers. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th yeah, there are many people do that. But also, for example, Professor Julia Gali also do, do that. Uh, normally, people do classical simulation so that you have uh, sufficient statistics. Then uh, you take some snapshots and calculate the, uh, the, 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 the interface of water. Uh, the interface potential between a water phase and a, a vapor. Um, I, I want to point out in this, indeed, we, we, uh, when we do this uh, compared to the work function, we need to have a consistent reference to, to the uh, vacuum. We, too, we use the experimental value. But just to point out, for any uh, electrochemistry measurement or uh, comparison with the ex electrochemical measurement, we don't need this 4.44 because so, experimentally people just measure the, the potential with respect to certain reference levels, standard hydrogen electron, right? That's what, exactly what we do. We do. Also, is, uh, in electrochemistry, people don't measure absolute potential. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and this 4.44 is not, is obtained, is, is not from a electrochemical measurement. That's, mm -hmm. that's based on other techniques yeah. okay thanks so in view of time uh, this is the last question so it's by ezra and he asks can you comment on the validity and accuracy of the classical edl models such as the gui chapman models given the new effects revealed by abinishio uh sorry the gui chapman uh because uh, we we never simulate any diffuse layer so in our small cell we can't really put in and we don't have the have the time scale to look at the diffuse layer so we can't really uh, say comment on, on, on that okay i i uh, surely in, in, in the field there are people do very complicated uh, theory try to also include the uh, diffuse layer uh, effect but i want to point out that most of the uh, real world applications, uh, particularly for in energy devices, we we actually all the experiments are done at a high concentration limit. Okay, we actually try one, one we want to uh, uh, actually remove the diffuse layer, right? Otherwise, you will have a potential uh, across the diffuse layer. That's actually a waste of 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 energy. So, uh, yeah. That's, uh, I guess, all the uh, important reactions actually are correct, or at least carry out in, uh, in high concentration limit. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Okay, I think uh, in view of time, we have to stop. Uh, so thanks a lot again, Jim, for agreeing to talk and, and giving us uh, a lot of insights uh, into double layers and capacitances. Um, so. yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And really my pleasure. Yeah, so we, this talk will be uploaded on, on YouTube and uh, yeah, so we, people if you have, that cannot follow, they, they can just look at the, the YouTube link. So okay. thanks, thanks and uh, see okay. you all next time. Okay, bye. 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 Okay.